Hi guys, this is Dan from the Investment ABC, your guide to financial freedom. And in this video, I want to talk about the Australian property market and the current price explosion we are witnessing. I want to give you my thoughts on the risks of buying a home right now and whether I think prices will fall or rise even further in the next few years. There are a couple of factors that are driving currently property prices higher in Australia and not only in Australia but around the globe. The main reason is indefinitely low interest rates and an increase in money supply to offset a financial meltdown during the sickness we are experiencing currently. Central banks have created more money than ever before in a very short time and that currency is looking for a place to go. Furthermore, inflation is starting to show in the official data and is in the media right now with lumber and other commodity prices at all-time highs. Curious people have way faster access to information via the internet and search for the reasons of inflation or watch YouTube videos about the topic and how to protect themselves. This vast amount of information wasn't available in prior inflationary periods, which is the reason why once inflation runs hot, it is going to be very hard to bring it down again. Ultra-low interest rates and the fear of hyperinflation are the most important drivers for investors to get into the property market right now. On top of that, building and material costs are increasing significantly because supply chains are clogged due to the sickness. This drives up the demand for newer houses significantly and causes people to postpone building new homes to a point where prices come back down again, reducing supply even further. If that is not enough, governments introduced schemes for first-home buyers last year to protect the housing industry. Many smart investors were front-running first-home buyers because one could have figured out that first-home buyers would pile into the property market due to housing schemes like the first homeowner grant and stamp duty concessions. Being locked down in tiny apartments, especially with children, is very exhausting and parents are going to do whatever it takes to secure a property with a little bit of a garden. Furthermore, many companies allowed employees to work remotely from home, which increased the demand for detached houses in outer suburbs. While detached houses increased dramatically, units weren't increasing at the same pace or at all, which tells me that there isn't a big shortage of homes to rent in many cities currently, especially with the borders closed. In my opinion, a lot of demand has been pulled forward due to this sickness and the growth of demand should slow down in the next few months. If inflation around the globe should increase even further and not be transitionary like central banks are claiming, bond and mortgage yields will start to climb. It will be hard for wages in Australia to climb at the same rate as inflation and once inflation is really unleashed. Many people who have already trouble servicing their mortgages or who are over leveraged will need to spend more money on food and other necessities, leaving less and less income to service the mortgage. If at the same time rates start to climb and these people have to refinance, they will be in big trouble. Some banks like the CBA already started to raise long-term fixed rates since funding costs have increased for the banks. Exactly the fixed rates in Australia combined with high private debt levels will be the number one reason for one of the biggest property crashes in modern history. The problem with fixed rates in Australia is that the long-term fixed rates are just too short with a maximum of 5 years compared to other countries like the US or many European countries who offer even cheap 30-year fixed rates. 5 years are passing too fast to pay off enough of the principal to, to be safe against major interest rate hikes. Australian property buyers and especially investors with multiple properties are used to lower and lower interest rates. They can't imagine interest rates rising, but this is exactly what is going to happen in case of inflation really picks up to such an extent that central banks around the globe are forced to tighten again. Once food and gasoline prices soar to an extent that people are going to the streets, the pressure will be too big and central banks will be forced to act. If we look at the chart of the US Fed funds rate and look at the years from 1977 to 1980, we can see how fast interest rates can rise when inflation really picks up. Interest rates in January 1977 were at 4.61% and rose to 17.61% in 1980 in just three years. I doubt current home buyers are prepared for such a scenario. 
Just imagine that you have purchased a property for 1 million Australian dollars and you have made a down payment of $200,000 and took a loan of around $800,000 at a rate of just 2%. You're paying currently $16,000 in interest which you have budgeted for and which you can handle to service. A couple of years later you see that you have to refinance when mortgage rates have climbed back up to say 5%. 5% is moderate and forget 10% or 17%. You now have to pay around 35,000 to 40,000 only in interest payments when the um, interest rates have climbed to 5%. I really doubt that many buyers are even prepared for such a scenario. If we consider that Australia's household debt to GDP ratio increased to 129.3% as of December 2020, the danger of an Australian financial crisis ignited by a property crash is quite high in my opinion. For comparison, the US had its financial crisis when the household debt to GDP ratio was at about 100%, falling to around 76% during that period. During the financial crisis, the US economy went through a deleveraging period which was necessary to clean the economy from malinvestments and speculation. Furthermore, the number of borrowers with a debt to income ratio of above 6 doubled in the last two years which will make it harder and harder for people to keep pace with the price growth and house prices. Unfortunately, governments around the globe are fearing the real deleveraging and are trying everything to prevent it from happening. They can try to kick the can down the road, but chances are high that at some point we will see a deleveraging which will hurt a lot of home buyers. Many people won't be able to sell the properties when they find out that they have negative equity. Unlike the US, Australian investors can't just walk away from the home. They will be indebted for a long time. They won't even have the money for repairs and maintenance on their properties. Asset prices from stocks to real estate are distorted and the same way demand exploded from one day to the other, the same way demand can dry up from one day to the other. If you look back at before last election, buyers were waiting with purchases because they were afraid that labor would win and get rid of negative gearing which would have impacted housing prices significantly. The same could happen once the RBA is forced to raise interest rates. More and more sellers would panic and try to sell their properties as fast as possible, but at the same point potential buyers would wait for cheaper prices and even higher interest rates. The bids for properties would collapse and it would take significant drops in prices before investors would consider buying, especially in cities like Sydney and Melbourne where rental yields are at an all-time low. Another threat for the property market is the government trying to get additional revenue by increasing land tax and stamp duty, similar to what Victoria is currently doing. Overall, I would be extremely careful right now to buy a property in Australia at this time, especially with little down payments. If you have enough cash and a stable job and need a place to live for your family, that is alright, or if you can secure a 20 to 30 year fixed loan abroad and buy in Australia, that is also okay. But playing the monopoly game of owning multiple investments properties with as little down payment as possible will most likely be the way to ruin yourself. In the past this was the best strategy to quickly gain financial independence as long as interest rates would decline and property prices rise. But times are changing and the trend is reversing. Interest rates are at rock bottom and the only thing it needs to push them higher is higher consumer price inflation for the RBA to act. Like I said before, Australia is way more vulnerable to higher interest rates than other countries since mortgage loans can be only fixed for 5 years. It is way too short in my opinion. The question now is if inflation is transitionary until the production of most goods is increasing again or if it is getting worse in the next few months. Leading economists have totally different views about this, so we will see what will happen. My view is that inflation is going to force central banks to tighten again, which will lead to a recession and deleveraging of debt. In the markets, the majority of people will lose and only a few will win. That is the reason why I think we will see a lot of pain for those holding the debt bomb. 
Once the deleveraging is finished and people suffered enough, central banks will start to flood the market with liquidity again and even more than what we have seen already. This is no financial advice and just my own opinion and I could be completely wrong and the opposite could happen. What I definitely know is that the risks of buying in expensive cities like Melbourne or Sydney have increased significantly. If you like this video, hit the like button to help to spread this video. The more likes and comments, the more YouTube is spreading the video and the more people will know about the risks investing in Australia right now. Bye guys and see you in the next one.